ancient Chinese screens or room dividers are going to be really important in Chinese society. After all, the homes tend to be fairly open and fairly sparse, so there's very little to separate you from everyone else. They serve as everything from status symbols to, well, privacy barriers. Now, the first thing to understand is as these are in initially developed, these room dividers, these screens, they tend to display rank. For example, you might see a scholar with a room divider or screen behind him that's going to be made of bamboo or other wood products. As you move up in rank, you're going to have more spectacular images, more spectacular screens. And we see one here in the painting uh, right there in the center. Now, at the simplest level, these are simply multi-panel pieces that are hinged together. Usually the hinges should appear to be handmade. Sometimes they appear to almost be stapled in place. Uh, you see different fasteners in China when they use metal fasteners than what you tend to see in the West. Either way, they're hinged so that they can be folded into basically the size of one panel or spread out to cover a specific area. Now, something like this might not be so much for privacy, but rather separating a space. As we get more ornate, we know that we're getting into higher ranking pieces. Now, this is more of a representation. This is a reproduction of one of these great pieces but we see that they've got ornate wood carving in this case typically the panels will match if they don't perfectly match they will bookend so in other words they should match the two center should match and then the two outer should match uh, as you look at them the inside can at times be painted they would cover that with fabric as we see here and it would be a painted fabric you can have painting directly on the wood surface. In this case, an urban depiction probably of one of the palaces. Or you can have these very simple landscapes. Sometimes you'll have images of tigers and other motifs that are generally symbolic of the person who owns it. These are the sorts of things that would often be commissioned. They were meant to get across a message. Now, look around your home. When you think about it, an awful lot of what we have is meant to depict some message. And it's usually a message we don't want to openly say. For example, you put up your diplomas and degrees to show that you're intelligent. You put out books for much the same reason. Maybe you have a massive TV and a bunch of sports memorabilia telling people what you're interested in. They're doing the same thing. Something like this with a very simple landscape, no real background except for that gold, which is traditionally gold leafed, although it could be gold lacquered. That's going to be very common. And the idea is that it almost becomes meditative. You can take a lot out of a very simple image like this. Maybe it brings you peace and calms you down. Maybe it gives you other ideas. Maybe it's meaning changes depending on your state of mind. We also see pieces with fabric that has been pulled over a void rather than having a wood panel behind the fabric. Very, very common. The fabric in China is typically going to be painted either with inks or pigment uh, depending on the circumstance. We also see paper dividers. Now these are going to be early on, they're going to be the sort of thing that the poor have and it's going to move from there. Paper is seen as really an inexpensive substitute for silks and other fabrics that you would more typically see used even in Chinese painting.